From Negan Smith, who the fans love to hate for all the horrifying things he's done, to Gregory, a cowardly villain who sold out Rick and his group to Negan, here are the most hated characters in The Walking Dead. The series has a ton of hateable characters, like Alan or Eugene, or even Lizzie Samuels. All right, I know she's a kid, but come on, she murdered her own sister just so she'd come back from the dead. Fans really hated her after that, and they were glad when Caro put a bullet in her head. But what's really sad is that Lizzie suffered from serious mental health issues, and no one in the show saw the red flags. So even though a lot of fans hate her, there's a lot of them who don't. And they say that she didn't deserve to die, and that someone should have seen the red flags and tried getting her the help she needed. If only The Walking Dead was all sunshine and rainbows, eh? But we're not here to talk about characters that deserved a second chance at life. We're here for the characters that the fans love to hate. And no one symbolizes this better than Negan Smith. His introduction into the series in Season 6 was highly anticipated and very eventful. But nothing beats the first episode of Season 7, when he used Lucille the baseball bat to bash Glenn's skull in. It's one of the most brutal scenes in the series. And a lot of viewers paused the episode so they could catch their breaths. And right after it aired, Fans flooded social media with posts about how they hate Negan for what he did, and he didn't kill a random character either. Glenn was one of the most beloved characters in the whole franchise, and it was really heartbreaking to see him go out in such a gruesome way. And fans even go so far as to say that the series went downhill after he died. But the showrunners wanted season 7 to start with a bang, and to establish Negan as one of the most brutal and evil characters in the whole series. And it's safe to say that they pulled it off. Because he's not just evil, he's deliciously evil. And Jeffrey Dean Morgan put a lot of energy into the role. But the thing about the character is, he's not overly emotional. Sure, his actions say otherwise, but he rarely acts on his feelings. Instead, he relies on his intelligence, and if a moment calls for a brutal murder, he won't think twice. But over the years, the writers tried making him more sympathetic. He spent years in prison under Rick's orders, who chose to let him live rather than kill him. And he even apologized to Maggie for what he did to Glenn, after realizing that he could have lost his own wife the same way. It's a great payoff and a wonderful moment between two characters, and it shows you how far Negan's come as a character. There's a huge difference between season 11 Negan and the one who showed up in season 6, but he's still fine with using killing someone to maintain order, because he knows violence makes a really big impression on people. But no matter what anyone says, he'll always be hated for what he did to Glenn in season 7. Sorry, Negan, but the fans don't forgive, and they certainly don't forget. Still, at least he's not you. Eugene, right? Where do I even start with this one? First of all, Eugene was a coward. There's no other way to say it. He told the whole group that he knew how to cure the wildfire virus, but he never pulled his weight, and he was always the weakest link. Abraham had to take responsibility for him, because he obviously knew how to get rid of the zombies once and for all. But that's not something you hate a character for, right? It's a zombie apocalypse, and you could get killed at any moment. So you pick a group, and you stick with them. The problem was that he was weird. Like, very weird. He liked watching Abraham and Rosita have s and that's hella creepy. Even for The Walking Dead, everyone let that go because he knew how to cure wildfire. But then, they realized that he lied about a cure, and that he said all that so Abraham would take him in and protect him. What's worse is that he often gaslit people who pulled their own weight, and whenever things got intense, he'd run away. So, it's no surprise that fans hated him and thought it was despicable for lying to everyone about a cure. The show tried redeeming him by the end, but it didn't work, because nothing could fix his reputation after his big fat lie. Oh and it got worse. He became a traitor and betrayed the group to the Commonwealth, solidifying his reputation as one of the most incompetent and hateable characters in the whole series. You know, it's actually insane that he survived until the final season, cause with his decision-making skills, a real person would have died in, like three weeks. But that's why people keep coming back to The Walking Dead. Every once in a while, you come across characters like Eugene or the governor that you can't help but hate. And another example of that is Father Gabriel Stokes. This guy was in everyone's top 10 lists for most hated Walking Dead character, and he sometimes hit the top 5 too. He was supposed to be a minister who took care of his flock, but he instead locked his entire congregation out of the church and let them get eaten by the zombies. And his reason? He had a deep-rooted fear of the walkers, and he didn't want to let them in. Wow, funny way to show your people the light, eh, Father? But it got so much worse because he betrayed the survivors the moment they showed up at the church. And I've got to say, Seth Gilliam played the role brilliantly. It makes sense, because he's had roles in Oz and The Wire, 
so there's no doubt about his abilities. He's so good as Father Gabriel that he might actually make you hate him instead of the character. And the worst part is that Gabriel never really redeemed himself after killing his congregation, at least not in a way that mattered. He became a fighter and a true leader by the final season, but it didn't wash away his sins, especially not the ones he committed in Alexandria, where he told everyone not to trust Rick and his group. He constantly kept putting fan favorite characters in danger, so it's no surprise that he's still one of the most hated characters to this day. But I haven't even gotten to the good stuff yet, because the next three characters are in everyone's top five list of the worst ones in The Walking Dead. And I'll start with Andrea Harrison. What's funny is that there were two characters in the comics that switched places in the series. One was Carol, and the other was Andrea. Now, in the comics, Carol was clingy and emotionally stunted and committed suicide. But Andrea was a tough, no-nonsense woman who lasted longer than anyone else. But in the show, the writers made questionable changes to both characters. Carol battled with her struggles and had one of the best character arcs in the series. Andrea, on the other hand, became the one who takes her own life by letting a zombified Milton bite her. But that's not why she got so much hate from the fans. She had a really strong arc in the first season, and she was really important to the whole story. But then she went off the rails. She slept with two major antagonists. Shane and the governor, and she also nearly killed Daryl. I could go on, but the point is she became infuriating, and the writers killed her off in a bland way. It wasn't the Andrea from the comics, and the fans hated her for it. And then there's Spencer Monroe, whose parents were the original leaders of Alexandria before Rick and his group showed up. And obviously, if your home's being taken over by a bunch of outsiders and your parents are being overthrown, you're gonna be mad. But Spencer was a coward, and he had everything handed to him. He never pulled his weight and hated the idea of working under someone. And Negan wasn't having any of his crap either, so he killed him in the streets when he realized Spencer was a liability. Negan gained some cool points for that. I'll give him that. But even Spencer was a shade better than the one and only, Gregory. Out of all the characters I've talked about so far, everyone hates him the most. The show made it clear right from the get-go that he cares about nothing and no one but himself, and the fact that he lives in the biggest and nicest house in Hilltop, while everyone else can barely afford to make it to the end of a month is what made him so despicable. And if that's not enough, he was also a spineless rat who'd backstab anyone if it meant he could save his own skin. Case in point, he immediately betrayed Rick and his group to Negan. So when Maggie strung him up and executed him, nobody in the audience was sad to see him go. So from Gregory, a cowardly villain who betrayed Rick and his group, to Negan Smith, who fans love to hate for all the horrifying things he's done. Those were the most hated characters in The Walking Dead.